The radionuclide generator is colloquially called a cow. It is based on the principle of the decay growth relationship and can be understood using a similar analogy of a cow on a farm. The farmer provides hay to the cow, which is utilized to make milk. Milking the cow yields precious milk. The process of eluting a generator is similar to milking a cow. An eluent that is, a solvent used to separate daughter radionuclide is passed through the generator column, which binds the daughter radionuclide and yields an eluate. Eluate contains the much required daughter radionuclide. When the rate of formation of daughter radionuclide, by the disintegration of the parent radionuclide, is equal to the rate of disintegration of the daughter radionuclide, the system is said to be in radioactive equilibrium. It can be of two types, transient and secular equilibrium. Transient equilibrium occurs when the half-life of the parent radionuclide is around 10 to 100 times greater than daughter half-life, such that along with the decay of the daughter, there will be a significant decay of the parent as well. The workhorse of nuclear medicine, a molybdenum-99 generator, is based on this principle. With a half-life of 66 hours, 87% of it undergoes beta decay into metastable technetium-99, having a half-life of 66 hours. It attains equilibrium in four half-lives, that is around 24 hours. After attaining equilibrium, the daughter appears to decay with the half-life of the parent. This equilibrium can be broken only by chemical separation of parent-daughter mixture, by eluting the generator. The daughter again grows in a generator column by the decay of the parent radionuclide and attains equilibrium. Just like a cow requires one day to replenish its store of milk, in a generator too, for maximum obtainable yield of daughter radionuclide, adequate time of four half-lives is required for activity to grow. Secular equilibrium occurs when the parent half-life is more than 100 times that of the daughter half-life, resulting in negligible decay of the parent radionuclide. The daughter radionuclide also appears to decay with the same half-life as that of the parent in the mixture. This is because for daughter to undergo decay, it must also be formed from the parent. As the parent half-life is long, decay is very slow and thus daughter decay also depends on the parent decay. 